Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Oh, I did not want to open the map box. Welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we will be looking over the 2020 and 2016 precinct maps. I've wanted to do this for a long time. I even had a witty title that I came up with uh, before I even reviewed this. But we're going to uh, get right into this because this will be a longer video. I'm going to be sitting here at my desk looking at these precincts for probably a while. I'm going to have to cut some parts of this video out. So let's get started with this video. Um, now... I, I want to briefly take a look at Alaska. Now, unfortunately, Alaska is interesting, but they haven't released the 2020 precincts for Alaska yet, um, which is really sad, but whatever. Um, now, they did do 2016. I just want to briefly look at 2016. So in 2016, uh, you know, most states, rural areas red, urban areas blue, comes down to the suburbs. Alaska is the opposite. Alaska, you know, these rural northern parts, they're very, they're majority Native American, so they're pretty democratic, uh, these areas over here. Um, and then, uh, you know, these more, uh, Anchorage, which is the biggest city, uh, along with Fairbanks, but more so Anchorage. Anchorage was pretty red in 2016. Uh, it's And it's mostly because the white voters, because the cities are mostly made up of white voters who aren't Native Alaskans or are Native American, at least. And they're big in the oil industry, and the, and the Republican Party is, is more friendly to corporate oil than the Democratic Party is, or at least perceived to be. I'm not going to comment on that from an opinion standpoint, but they're perceived to be. Uh, so, yeah. Now, let's get started with, uh, so I've kind of put together a list of counties I want to zoom in on. I'll start with uh, a county that's near where I was born, Clallam County, Washington. I wasn't born in exactly Clallam County, Washington, but this is a county that Joe Biden won, that Hillary Clinton lost. This was a 3% Biden county. Um... Uh, that you know he did better because he because he improved in the areas that are closer to Seattle. Now Seattle is on the other end of the strait. I should pull it up right here. So Seattle's right over here. That's where I was born. Uh, nice place. Um, but uh, you know Seattle obviously very blue. Seattle is across this strait. I, I forget the name. I, I should know this because I was born there. Um, but essentially we have this strait here, and it separates Seattle from uh, Clallam County, which is now the ultimate bellwether. In fact, Vigo was right from like every election since like 1948 or something until 2020 when Trump won it, but he lost the election. Clallam is now the ultimate bellwether. Uh, it has been right every election since 1976. Uh, so Cl Clallam County was a, a Clinton, or it was a Trump, a Biden County, as I mentioned earlier. But let's look at the ship. We have this handy dandy tool right here. We can take a look at the ship from 2016. Now, in the rural uh, western part of the county, Trump did a little better. He didn't do too much better, but he did a lot better. But he did a little better. Well, I, I had a contradictory moment there. Um, but, and as you can see, you know, closer to the Seattle area, I guess you could even say Seattle suburbs, if, if you want to say that, across the pond, um, they shifted huge to Biden. You know, hugely, actually, uh, to Biden. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, I guess another uh, Trump-Biden uh, county is Bend County, or Bend County. Deschutes County, Oregon. I don't know why I said Bend County. I was thinking of the city Bend, which is located in uh, this county. Bend kind of is a more liberal area of the state relative, or is a more liberal area of the county because the rest of the county is more rural. Of course, now Bend is part of the Republican uh, Congressional District of Oregon. You know, if, if you looked at a congressional map of Oregon, we have this one big Republican district that's very rural. The rest are Democratic to a certain extent. There's one district over here that's kind of competitive that... I believe is, is represented by Peter DeFazio, but this is not what we're talking, we're talking about. Deschutes, which was, as I mentioned, a Trump county. If this wants to load, it's lagging, which is annoying. Here we go. Uh, Bend, as you can see, located in uh, this county. This was a narrow, narrow uh, Trump county in 2016. He won it by, like, I think 2%. He won it by 3%. Flipped to buy Biden carried it by nine. So Biden did better in Bend. And you know, I guess Bend's a more suburban town, as you can see. So yeah. Now uh moving on, California, we don't really have to talk, but it, it's a there are some interesting counties. I will tell you that Biden did a lot better in Southern California than Clinton did. Uh just zooming out to a county by county map. He did better. He flipped a few counties in the Southern California, most notably Inyo County, but uh I don't to be honest, I don't pay too much attention to California politics. We have an interesting recall happening. Governor Newsom, spoiler alert, he's not going to be recalled, that I will tell you, uh, but as a Californian, not too much going on in my state politically, um, but, you know, in terms of Nevada, uh, Nevada is a state that is my favorite state, of those of you who don't know, I love Nevada, it's a fascinating state, highly recommend it, I want, my dream is to go to every county there, uh, I've been to a big number of them, but not every one, 
Um, now, a county that I did go to was Washoe County. Washoe is a swing county. This is a bellwether for the state, not really for the country, because Clinton carried it in 2016, but she won Washoe by 1%. She carried the state by 24 Biden won it by five, and he carried the state by a similar margin. So Washoe, the northern, the northern part of the county is more rural, but Reno is the Democratic hub of the county, along with Sparks, but to a lesser extent, Reno did uh, come out for Biden, and he won uh, Reno, and he won the Cal County as a result of it. And Reno is a big part of the Democratic coalition in Nevada, but an even bigger part is Las Vegas. Now, Las Vegas in Clark County, you know, uh, I want to take a look at this, because Las Vegas, Clark County, first of all, is a big part. Like, Democrats could not win, could not win in Nevada at all with, without Clark County. Clark County is their saving grace. But with Las Vegas, um, this is a city that is, I think, 700,000 people large. And if the Democrats do well enough here, they can, you know, override their inability to be competitive in rural counties. Like, you know, the Democrats, the Biden won two counties, Trump won the, won the rest. Biden won the two closest counties. Uh, and, you know, he, he only won two, and they're still pretty close, but they're just so big that it doesn't even matter um, in terms of population, at least. But anyways, uh, just briefly circling back to Las Vegas. So taking a look at the shift from 2016, this tool we have over here, the city proper of Las Vegas shifted to the right. Donald Trump did better with working class Hispanics. But look at the suburbs. The suburbs, are, you know, kind of outside the city, they shifted to the left. So Trump did a little better in Clark than he did in 2020 than he did in 2016. But the suburbs cost him the county and the state in the end. Even though he did, you know, he still did pretty well in the rural part of the state. He improved in Elko. He improved uh, in uh, Pershing. He improved in Humboldt. He improved in Churchill. He improved in Nye. Uh, Nye is a uh, interesting county because it's solely Republican. In the Hispanics, they're a vote Republican, which I think is interesting. Uh, he improved, like, even in these more, I don't want to call them big cities, but, like, taking a look at the cities in these counties, like T Tonopah, which is the county seat, of Nye County, Trump did better. Uh, Tonopah, in the Tonopah area, he did better. And, you know, I, I guess areas, I'm trying to think of some, Elko in Winnemucca, he did better in Elko. He, he won Elko, uh, even though it's 20,000 people strong, he won Winnemucca. Uh, he won Lovelock, although now I'm t naming cities uh, that I've been to in Nevada. I mean, these are just towns, honestly. But, yeah, Nevada, interesting state. We're going to have to move on, unfortunately. Now, Arizona, like a, a similar thing with Las Vegas. Uh, Phoenix shifted the city proper shifted to the right. Donald Trump did better in this in the city of Phoenix in 2020 than he did in 2016. Hillary Clinton did better with Hispanics, as we all know. But the suburbs, look at the suburbs. They shifted so far to the left that didn't matter, and it was able to make Biden do four points better in the state. Uh, he Biden also did pretty well with Native Americans up in Apache as well as Coconino County. Or, yeah, Coconino and Apache. These are uh, you know majority uh, Native American uh, places that Biden did well in. Um, and he, he also did better in Flagstaff. I just thought I'd briefly mention that he uh, did significantly better in Flagstaff, which is like, like 80,000 people, I believe. So that that was worth mentioning. Now, uh, obviously, we're not going to discuss anything over here that's not too, not too interesting. Denver suburbs one huge to Biden. I think we all know that. But uh, Wyoming obviously does not exist. I, I don't even know. Like, they're coming up with fake data. Like, they spend so much time trying to pretend that it exists, which I just think is uh, stupid, to be honest. South Dakota. Uh, moving on to Nebraska, obviously Biden did flip the second district. As second district is mostly Omaha and some surrounding areas, so Omaha and the suburbs. Now Biden did a lot better in Omaha. He, he did a little worse in the city as a in the city proper. But look at the suburbs. Look at that swing that uh, fueled the Democrats uh, doing well in uh, uh, that se second district of Nebraska that they carried. Uh, although I don't know why I thought of this randomly, but there is one random Democratic precinct, or there are actually two. Uh, in Scotts Bluff, which is uh, the county seat of Scotts Bluff County. For whatever reason, Scotts Bluff did uh, shift to the uh, right. I, I don't know why it's not loading, change from 2016, whatever. Uh, just thought I'd bring that up. Nebraska, brief dive into there. Now, Kansas, rural Kansas could really not make up their mind. They were, uh, as you can see, they shifted, some precincts shifted right, some shifted left. Uh, but, you know, Kansas City in Overland Park, Biden did better there, especially in the suburbs, as you can see, the suburbs. Uh, they were a lot better for Biden than they were for Hillary Clinton because of the suburban swing. Uh, now moving on to Texas, this is an important day. We've got a lot of, to discuss. First, let's took a, a let's you know a lot of this video has been uh, praising Biden for his performance in the suburbs. He had a horrible performance in the Rio Grande Valley. Horrible with Hispanics, he got destroyed there. Uh, he had an abysmal, an abysmal performance in Zapata County. Just look at the swing here. Zapata was a five point Trump County in twenty twenty. Uh, 
well, actually, let's go over here. In 2016, let's zoom out to our county map. In 2016, Zapata was a 33-point Clinton County. So we had a 38-point swing to the uh, right in Zapata and so many some other places of Rio Grande Valley, uh, Laredo, McAllen, and even going up to El Paso. So let's just take a look at the swing. It's just solid red. We saw just solid red, literally. The, these precincts, these majority Hispanic precincts in the South, swung huge for Trump. Huge. Solid red. The Rio Grande Valley in this map, look. The rest of Texas, pretty blue. Dallas area, very blue. Houston, pretty blue. Solid red in Texas. And we saw this with other Hispanic areas near the border. So, Texas, bad performance served by. And, you know, I was saying this. and like, I don't like, I, I feel like I'm proud of my prediction, of course. I'm proud of it. I worked hard on it. And I'm glad that I got, uh... And I'm glad that I, I guess you could say I, uh, I'm trying to think about this and go off as someone who's, uh, not completely arrogant. Obviously, I am an arrogant person. Uh, I, I, th I think we're all arrogant, but I try not to be arrogant. Um, but, uh, it just, I'm proud of my prediction. I'll say that. And I was saying for a very long time that Texas was going to be a five point Trump state at the very least, five to six point Trump state. Now, Obviously, for those of you who don't know, on Twitter, a lot of, you know, I, I guess I had some bad experiences on Twitter. People, you know, they, they called me a fool. They said I was biased towards Trump, which is actually it's more the opposite, I guess, if anything. Um, but uh, I, I kind of went off into a tangent there. But I, I, but I, this was so predictable. The polls were abysmal for Biden with Hispanics, and we saw it coming from a mile away. Um, so, now, nah. However, Biden had a good performance in Dallas, especially in Tarrant County, which is over here. This one hugely to the left. This was a Clinton. This was a Trump County that Biden did carry. You know, in Dallas, he proper he did a little worse, but in the suburbs, he did so much better. And this is why Texas, despite his his performances that were worse in the city proper and in the Rio Grande Valley, obviously he still was able to uh, do. I think four points better than Clinton in Texas. Now Mississippi, uh, the the Delta County is obviously uh, pretty blue. Now Florida. More Hispanic, uh, really not coming out for Biden. Um, the shift, it's hugely Republican. Now, the shift in Miami-Dade was hugely Republican, but if we look at, um, you know, upstate Florida, like taking a look at Duval, which is where Jacksonville is, city proper was a little redder. The suburbs, Duval's the suburban county, shifted to the left. Pinellas County was another flip. Uh, St. Petersburg, uh, obviously the Democratic area of the state that Clinton, she, she, she did a little better than Biden, but the suburbs of St. Petersburg and Clearwater, as well as Largo, shifted to the left. Tampa, as you can see, shifted hugely to the right as a city, but the suburbs were enough to swing Hillsborough, the county, as a whole, to the left. Uh, or actually, it was one, it was one, it was a little bit more Republican, but Pinellas shifted to the left, uh, as you can see. Uh, Tallahassee obviously was a, the, kind of the only Democratic area that panhandled. This is it's it, it, it's a very diverse part of Florida. Pensacola as well, or oh my oh my pronouncing that wrong. Pensacola, yeah my bad. I've been saying that wrong this whole time. Florida just like we look at that now. Georgia, this was a flip that I did not see coming. I thought Trump was going to win it, uh, but look at this sub suburban swing. You can like it's it looks funny because Atlanta, the city as a whole, shifted a little bit to the right. Trump did a little better there in twenty twenty than he did in twenty sixteen. But these suburbs shifted huge to the left. It didn't matter uh, whether Clinton did uh, better than Biden with black voters by a little bit. But these suburbs of Atlanta, and it's obviously the city stayed blue. The suburbs shifted huge to the left, and that's what geared Biden's win in Georgia as well as throughout the country. North Carolina was pretty split. You know, the change in the rural areas was more democratic. Rural North Carolina is not as, as Republican as other rural parts of, the, of other states, but uh, obviously, as you can see, Charlotte suburb shifted to the left, but the city proper shifted to the right, and that's the big theme we're taking a look at. Now, let's move on to the Rust Belt and uh, take a look at Minnesota first. Now, Minnesota uh, obviously is a working class state that's very friendly to Democrats. The working class voters in Minnesota seem to be much more left leaning than those in neighboring Wisconsin or Iowa. So Duluth and the and all of the Iron Range shifted to the left. Uh, especially up here, um, northern Minnesota shifted to the left, uh, and St. Paul and Minneapolis, wherever Minneapolis is, if they want, I don't know why they're not showing Minneapolis. Minneapolis should be right there, but they're only showing St. Paul, which is, uh, it's the capital, but I don't know why they're not showing that, whatever. It, it, it's the twin, here we go, I don't know why I had to zoom in to see that. The twin cities, the suburbs shifted to the, to the, uh, left, hugely, 
just look at that hugely to the left and, and you know we see the same thing in i guess you could say milwaukee the city proper shifted a little bit to the right actually some of these tracing swung a lot to the right but the suburb shifted to the left same with chicago suburb shifted left uh gary indiana suburb shifted left uh detroit michigan suburbs shifted left uh taking a look at cleveland ohio city proper shifted to the right suburb shifted left I, I can do this all day i can drill suburb shifted left into your brain and, and until nothing uh sounds anything like anything anymore so yeah now i just want to look at door county which is the bellwether of wisconsin they usually vote for the winner they did get it wrong in 2018 gubernatorial election they, they went for walkover evers but it was pretty close so i'll excuse them uh but door county uh 2020 uh, Sturgeon Bay, as well as Sister Bay, geared the, uh, geared the narrow in for Biden here. This is a more, uh, it's, it's, it, it, these are more traditional suburban conservatives uh, that, you know, th they shifted to the left. Biden did better in Door than Hillary Clinton did, which so I bring that up. Um, and taking a look at Michigan, obviously, a shift from 2016. Uh, Ann Arbor uh, was a big a win for Biden. This is college, and this is where the University of Michigan is. Uh, Michigan, as we all know, Biden did pretty well there relative to Clinton. Illinois, I don't want to talk about too much. Ohio, obviously. Now, taking a look at Youngstown, Hillary Clinton actually did a little better in, than Biden in Youngstown, I believe. As you can see, city proper, she did better, which I did not see coming. I honestly thought that the working class would be better for Biden than Clinton. It, it was to an extent, but, you know, Trump made history when he flipped the these usually Democratic voters in Mahoning and Trumbull counties. Uh, you know, Mahoning was a Clinton county. She narrowly won it. Oh, this was like a 30-point Obama county that Clinton only won by three. Um, and it flipped to Trump So because of his working-class appeal. Now, going over to Pennsylvania, which I thought we should talk about, you know, kind of in depth, actually, because Philadelphia is a region of the state, obviously very blue, along with Pittsburgh. But look at the Philadelphia suburbs, like Chester County, uh, Westchester, I guess you could say. Look, look at that swing. Chester County swung huge to the Democratic Party, huge to the Democratic Party. Uh, it, very, very big swings. Now, Philadelphia, in the county of Philadelphia County, Trump still did better. But uh, the suburbs, he, he, Trump Biden did so well in the suburbs, it didn't even matter. Now, just to wrap this video up, I, uh, I'm, I'm just going to take a look at the Northeast. Uh, Northeast, obviously, Biden did very well. He only lost a couple precincts in Massachusetts. It shows you how, how, how blue of a state that is. But look at the swing. He did so much better in the, in the Northeast. He did better in the in like ninety percent of towns in New Hampshire. He did better in ninety five percent of of Massachusetts. He did better in most of Maine, except for uh, this random huge precinct that is super rural. It looks like. So, uh, just wanted to zoom out so we could see this huge swing from twenty sixteen. Obviously, a few things stand out to you: the Rio Grande Valley, along with Southern Florida, shifted hugely to the left or to the right. But the suburbs in the Northeast shifted hugely to the left. So. I just thought I'd do this. It's, it's, this wasn't, I guess, extremely detailed, but it was pretty detailed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm kind of in a rush. If there's anything I missed, uh, tell me in the, uh, in the comment section. I'll do my best to reply if it's productive and if it's a conversation that I, that is worth having. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.